Okay, thank you, Kevin. That was great information and it uh, dovetails well, I think, with what I'm gonna talk about. Um, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. I, I appreciate the opportunity to participate in this, uh, in this presentation. Uh, my name is Kathleen Grant and I am the Assistant State Director for the State Health Insurance Program, which is otherwise known in Massachusetts as SHINE. Uh, my goal today is to just introduce you to the basic concepts um, when planning for Medicare. This is by no means comprehensive, um, but we will try to give you some guidance on what your next steps would be um, at the end of the discussion. So um, we can go ahead and go to the next slide. So the acronym SHINE stands for Serving the Health Insurance Needs of Everyone. And the caveat there is it's everyone with Medicare. Um, and the reason for that is we have over 600 uh, certified counselors in the state that are, that are trained very specifically to deal with the Medicare beneficiary population. So um, we, th that's our focus and that's where our expertise lies. Um, most of these, or to say many of these, uh, these counselors are actually professionals, but the, the bulk of our, of our counselor base are um, highly trained volunteers. Um, our mission in SHINE is to always provide free um, and unbiased insurance counseling. And we do it not only directly to the beneficiaries, but their families and caregivers. We're able to work with them um, if we're not able to work directly with the beneficiaries. Um, counselors usually, um, in, in outside of the COVID-19 uh, timeframe, uh, do counseling one-on-one -on -one at senior centers. And um, as Kevin mentioned, there's some challenges now with the way we're trying to do outreach to folks, but we are trying to get in touch with folks by phone and folks can still call their local senior centers and most of those calls um, get channeled to us eventually. You can go to the next slide. Okay, so a few important things before we get started. Um, you need to remember that Medicare is not free. There are premiums and there are gaps for several parts of Medicare. It's a very complex subject, and no matter what your education level or your background level or what you did for a living, it can still be very, very hard to understand. Also, this is important. Everyone's situation is different. You know, you'll hear from friends and relatives that, that the plan that they have is the absolute best and you should look into it. And the truth is it may be the best plan for them, but not necessarily for you. Uh, also, some of the rules related to Medicare um, vary widely by state. So what you're gonna learn about Massachusetts today and what you'll learn when you speak with a Shine counselor in Massachusetts is not necessarily something that you're gonna to wanna to share with your friends in Florida or California because the rules are very different again from state to state. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Okay, so why is it important to plan for Medicare? Well, as I'll explain, if you enroll at the wrong time, it can mean that your access to coverage uh, could be delayed and you might even be assessed penalties for missing certain deadlines. Medicare rules are extremely complex, and unfortunately, sometimes you might find out what you need to, get to know after the fact, after something has happened. Also, uh, and I think this is important to note, healthcare expenses are becoming a much larger portion of total spending in retirement. Um, Kaiser did a study in, uh, the Kaiser Foundation did a study in 2018, um, which indicated that uh, about 41% of an individual's Social Security income was going towards out-of-pocket health expenses in 2013, and they expected that percentage to rise by, 20, uh, by 2030 up to 50%. So 50% of that payment that Kevin was talking about earlier um, is projected to go towards health expenses within the next 10 years. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Okay, so Medicare is a federally funded health insurance program. But again, it covers only some of the cost of healthcare services for its beneficiaries. Coverage is also available just for services that are deemed um, medically reasonable and necessary for the treatment or diagnosis of illness or injury. And that's something that your physician is gonna make the determination on. But you need to understand that there are some services that are not covered by Medicare. Um, and there are rules in place where if you go in to get those services, your doctor is required to alert you that Medicare may not be covering them. But just be aware that Medicare does not cover everything and it does not cover every service. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Okay, so there are four parts to Medicare. People get somewhat confused by this alphabet soup um, and it takes a while to get used to this. But in general, you've got four parts of Medicare. You have Part A, which is your hospital insurance that essentially covers um, your inpatient stay at a hospital. You have Part B, which is your medical insurance. That covers your 
doctor's services, both in and out of the hospital, any other outpatient services you receive, uh, lab tests, blood work, things of that nature. Then you have Part C, which is also known as Medicare Advantage. Medicare Advantage is an alternative to original Medicare, which essentially bundles your hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage all under one plan. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the presentation. And then finally, you have Part D, which is um, a latecomer to the Medicare family, um, but uh, it, it was established in 2006. And Part D is the standalone prescription drug plan that's available to individuals that are on original Medicare. And then we'll do a slightly deeper dive into each of these. Uh, next slide. Okay, so we talk about who is actually eligible to, um, to have Medicare. So Medicare is open to individuals 65 or older who are US citizens or legal residents for at least five continuous years. It's also available to individuals who may be under 65, but who have received 24 months of social security disability payments. There are also exceptions to that 24 month waiting period for individuals with specific illnesses um, like end stage renal disease and also ALS. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so um, Medicare has different enrollment periods that you should be aware of. Uh, the initial enrollment period is the seven month period that starts three months before the, the month of a person's 65th birthday and it ends on the last day of the third month after your birthday month. So let's have, as an example, say if you were born on July 4th, your initial enrollment period would start on April 1st, going three months back to the first of that month, and it would be over on October 31st, three months after your birthday month, the last day of that month. For anyone who's already receiving Social Security benefits when they turn 65, so as Kevin showed on that slide, people that start receiving it at age 62, they're actually automatically gonna be enrolled in Medicare A and B when they reach the age of 65. Um, they aren't automatically enrolled in Part D in drug coverage, that's their responsibility, that's something they need to do separately. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later too. But for anyone else who's turning 65 and they wanna enroll in Medicare, the burden is on them to take action and apply through Social Security, either in person or online. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Okay, so during the initial enrollment period, when you choose to enroll can have a, a significant impact on the actual start date of your Medicare coverage. So as you can see from this chart, if you need your Medicare coverage to start on your birthday month, you actually need to go in and enroll during any of the three months prior to your birthday month. If you delay for any reason, even if you delay until your birthday month, your effective date begins to move out further. So if you waited until the last month of your initial enrollment period, like as in our previous example, if you waited, um, you would then have to wait until the end of uh, October, essentially November 1st to get your, your coverage. So. If you wait until the last month of your initial enrollment period, your Medicare coverage would not start until three months after that month. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So the answer to the question, when should I enroll in Medicare is, is very different for each individual. If you and or your spouse are working past the date when you become eligible, which is usually at age 65, when to sign up and for what parts of Medicare is dependent on several factors. When an employer has less than 20 employees, they usually require Medicare eligible employees to enroll in Medicare, which then becomes their primary coverage. If you're covered, however, in a high deductible plan with a healthcare spending account or an HSA account, you need to suspend those HSA contributions six months in advance of signing up for Part A. And we're seeing more and more companies that are offering high deductible plans with healthcare spending accounts. Um, so it's important for you to check with your HR department regarding signing up for Medicare when you turn 65 if you're in that situation. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So in some cases, it may be appropriate to delay your enrollment in, in Medicare. Um, for Part A, most people do enroll at age 65 because it is premium free. Um, unless, as we previously noted, they're still contributing to an HSA account. If you're currently covered by an employer group health plan, either your own or a spouse's plan, you can delay enrollment in Part B without penalty. 
You can also delay enrollment in a Part D plan as long as your current prescription drug coverage is considered creditable. And that's something that your employer can confirm for you whether, whether your prescription drug coverage is considered creditable. And that's a term that essentially is defined as being as good as Medicare Part D coverage. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Okay, if you have delayed enrollment past age 65 because you had employer coverage, you have what's called a special enrollment period after you stop working or if you lose that health insurance for some reason, you have this, this period to apply for Medicare. It's a special enrollment period that lasts up to eight months after the date you lose the employer coverage. And in order to avoid any late enrollment penalties, you'd need to pick up your Medicare coverage before that eight month period ends. Now, most people are going to try to time this to pick up the Medicare coverage. There would be little reason for them to wait the eight months, but the eight months is important to remember in case something else happens and people tend to forget or they think that they can go without coverage. Um, but the eight month period is the period of time you have in order to avoid any kind of penalty um, before signing up for Part B. If you miss the opportunity within that eight months, the window closes for you. And the next time you would be able to apply for Part B would be during the general enrollment period, which is at the beginning of the year from January 1st to March 31st, and which actually delays your coverage until July 1st. So if you are someone whose initial enrollment period or your special enrollment period ends um, towards the fall, you're gonna have to wait until the beginning of the following year. Um, and then more than that, you're gonna have to wait till the middle of the year to actually get coverage. So you can leave some significant gaps out there where you're not covered. And that's why we really stress again, to be aware of what these deadlines are and when these special enrollment periods are available to you. Okay, and the, just to uh, mention the penalty, which we footnoted here, um, if you do happen to miss that, that enrollment uh, window for signing up for Part B on a timely basis, um, once you are able to sign up, um, you will have a penalty tacked on to your Part B premium, um, which represents 10% of whatever the current Part B premium is. Those Part B premiums go up every year, so your penalty will move up with it and that penalty does stay with you for life. And this is why we really emphasize people being aware of uh, timing when it comes to signing up for Medicare. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Okay. There's also a special enrollment period for Part D or prescription drug coverage, um, but of course the rules are different um, than the rules for Part B because that's, that's Medicare and because Part D was added later to the Medicare family. Um, they, for some reason, didn't, uh, didn't have the rules be cohesive with what was already in place and they created a whole new set of rules. So if you delay your enrollment in Part D coverage past the age of 65, because you have coverage from an employer plan, you actually have two months from the end of that coverage to pick up a Medicare prescription drug plan. Um, this presumes, again, that the drug coverage that you had through your employer plan was considered creditable. And again, that's something your employer can verify for you. If you miss this special enrollment period, you may have to wait until the Medicare open enrollment period, which happens every fall from October 15th to December 7th, to pick up Part D coverage. Um, and like Part B, late enrollees do face a penalty. In the case of Part D, the penalty is actually 1% of a national base premium for every month that enrollment is delayed past the month that you were eligible to pick it up, okay? lot to absorb, I know. Okay, so now let's talk about COBRA coverage a little because this is where we see a lot of folks um, slip up and misunderstand um, what their obligation is in terms of signing up for Medicare. So when leaving employment, whether voluntarily or involuntarily, you may be offered continued health coverage through COBRA. It's extremely important to understand how COBRA works with Medicare. Most importantly, COBRA does not qualify as current employer coverage and therefore, it does not protect you from the Part B late enrollment penalty. However, since the prescription drug coverage offered through Cobra, COBRA is usually considered creditable, COBRA does protect you from the Part D late enrollment penalty. So COBRA can be taken to supplement Medicare, but it's typically quite expensive, and there are other options for you to consider in supplementing Medicare, which we'll talk a bit about. So be careful and understand that if you're offered COBRA, if it is not current employer coverage, if you're not currently on your employer roles as a participant in their regular insurance plan, your 
time period has started, the clock has started in. If you don't get in by the windows, either for the initial enrollment period or a special enrollment period, if you've lost employment, um, that window is going to close for you and you um, taking COBRA is not going to protect you. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Okay, so earlier we introduced parts A and B. We noted that part A covers hospital insurance and is premium free for most individuals who burn the necessary 40 credits or 10 years of working that Kevin mentioned earlier. But we also need to point out that there are what are known as gaps in part A coverage, expenses that you, the beneficiary, will ultimately be responsible for. This includes a hospital deductible as well as co-pays and co-insurance. There are also some limits on coverage in skilled nursing facilities that you need to be aware of. With Part B, which is your medical insurance, covering all your doctor's services and outpatient services, you'll be paying a monthly premium for that, and it's based on your income, and there'll still be gaps in coverage due to co-pays and an annual deductible, which will also be the beneficiary's responsibility. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So as a result of the Affordable Care Act of 2010, there are a number of preventive services that are covered by Medicare Part B and are provided at no cost. Um, what you see here is just a partial list of the health screenings that are included, uh, including mammograms, colorectal screenings, and some diabetes self-management training. Part B also covers, you see at the bottom there, what's called an annual wellness visit. It's important to note that an annual wellness visit is not an annual physical, but rather a discussion between you and your doctor regarding your health and management of any ongoing health issues. Um, a complete list of the preventive services covered by Part B, it's actually a two-pager, um, I believe it will be available and distributed to you after this session. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So this is uh, what we tried to conceive of as a roadmap about your Medicare coverage choices. So Medicare beneficiaries can choose to get their coverage in one of two ways. The first option, which is shown here on the, on the left of the chart, is to enroll in Part A and Part B, uh, again called Original Medicare, and add a separate Part D prescription drug plan and potentially add a supplement or a Medigap plan um, to cover the aforementioned gaps in coverage. Um, adding a supplement is completely up to the beneficiary. It's not required. There's no penalties for not doing it. Um, there's obviously a cost involved in, in picking up a supplement, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But again, that's a completely voluntary piece, and it has nothing to do with Medicare. These plans, Medigap plans, are sold by private insurance companies, and Medicare has no jurisdiction over them. So um, now, alternately, the beneficiary on your right side of the screen may choose to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, also known as Medicare Part C. With those Medicare Advantage plans, your parts A, B, and D coverage are all bundled under one plan, um, and you would not be able to purchase a supplement plan, nor would you need one um, when you have a Medicare Advantage plan. Okay, we can go to the next slide, talk a bit more about supplement plans. So Massachusetts currently has seven insurance companies that are offering supplements or Medigap plans. Uh, there are currently three levels of coverage available, and this is new in 2020. Um, there's what's called the core level, supplement 1A, which is a new level, and supplement 1. Now, enrollment in supplement 1, it's important to note, is, is closed to anyone who's just becoming Medicare eligible. Uh, however, anyone who was Medicare eligible as of January 1st, 2020, would still be allowed to apply for this program. So if you, had, if you were past age 65, which is when you were Medicare eligible, and you're now 67, um, you would still be able to apply for Supplement 1 because you met that 1120 cutoff date. But for anyone else, you know, newer waves of retirees coming in, Supplement 1 is not going to be open to them. And I'll explain why in a moment. So each of these products offers varying levels of coverage for deductibles and coinsurance. The premium you pay depends on the level that you choose. There are no referrals required, and any medical practice that accepts Medicare will accept any of these plans. Uh, Note that the supplements don't include drug coverage, so the beneficiary would still need to have a separate Part D prescription drug plan. And also, and this is unique to Massachusetts, or I, I, not necessarily unique to Massachusetts, but it's something that is unique about the Massachusetts um, uh, enrollment process, is we have what's called continuous open enrollment, which means that beneficiaries have the opportunity to enroll or disenroll or change between plans um, any of these supplements from month to month. There's no such thing as an open enrollment period here for Medigap plans, which is different than supplement offerings in other states 
where there may be many more choices and limitations on when you can enroll. So essentially the main reason that supplement one was, uh, was, was uh, closed to new, um, to new applicants or new enrollees is supplement one was a level which covered uh, all of your co-pays as well as your hospital deductible and your part B deductible. And there was uh, a congressional act passed a couple of years ago in which the decision was made that they did not want any supplement plans to be continuing to offer coverage of the part B deductible to any new enrollees. They wanted uh, beneficiaries to take responsibility for that that amount themselves, um, and it's currently $198. So the first $198, it's a deductible on Part B, would be the responsibility of the beneficiaries. And for anybody new to Medicare, um, they need to absorb that. Um, the rules have changed, and now they no longer can buy a plan that would cover that for them. Okay, I think we can go on to the next slide. Okay. So now we turn to Medicare Advantage plans or Medicare Part C. Advantage plans are usually organized as either HMOs, um, health maintenance organizations, or preferred provider organizations, PPOs. And the important thing here to understand is that these are private plans that offer services through a network. And a specific network of doctors and facilities means that um, at the beneficiary has uh, perhaps fewer choices um, or definitely fewer choices than if they were going to a Medicare provider. Um, they need to work within the network in terms of a primary care physician and in terms of specialists um, that, uh, and they do need to get referrals from their primary care physician. So um, the premiums for Medicare Advantage plans are lower um, or can be lower than some of the supplement plans, but Advantage plans may also have, um, even after you've paid the premium, as you use services through Advantage plans, you will have co-pays and uh, co-insurance that may be due. Um, as we noted before, prescription drug coverage is almost always included, and if you do select to go the Medicare Advantage route, you would have to make sure you have to take the drug coverage that comes with whatever Medicare Advantage plan you select. You would have to make sure that your prescriptions are covered by their formulary, and probably most importantly, before you select a Medicare Advantage plan, you would want to make sure that your physicians, um, the physician or specialist that you want to deal with, accept a particular Medicare Advantage plan. That's always something we stress to people before they make any decisions about moving in this direction. Okay, we can go to the next slide. So there's no answer to the question, which, which route is best? And we get asked that a lot at Shine. And again, like everything else with Medicare, it's a very individualized decision. Um, it's, it's really based on your health, your financial situation, your flexibility in changing providers, you know, where you are in your life, are you doing a lot of traveling, do you stay within your home base, or do you go overseas? I mean, we ask a lot of questions like that to try to help people come to the right choice, but we did create here a very high level list of a few of the pros and cons of each approach, and I mentioned a few of these in talking about it. On the left, you have your Medigap um, supplement one coverage as an example, you're gonna pay a higher monthly premium, but you're paying money up front. And after that, you're not seeing a lot of co-pays or co-insurance. You have the freedom to choose doctors. You can travel across the country. Any doctor that accepts Medicare is gonna take your insurance and you don't have to do any, you know, get any referrals ahead of time. Um, you are, you're covered anywhere in the United States. And if you have a Medigap, you will also be able to get foreign travel covered. Um, but also in terms of caveats, you'll notice it says there that you know, there are a lot of, of additional services like, like hearing and vision um, that are not part of Medicare. Medicare doesn't cover things like that, original Medicare. You'll get some minor add-ons with some of the supplements, but um, they're not particularly robust offerings. So that's the Medigap with original Medicare side of, the, side of the fence. On the other side, we have Medicare Advantage plans. Again, lower premiums, but it's more of a pay-as-you-go instead of pay up front because you will have co-pays. You are restricted to a network, um, so you need to be uh, mindful of that. You may need referrals. A lot of people are used to that with current types of insurance plans that they have through employers. Um, there is the, the, the benefit of getting some extra benefits. Their, their vision and their hearing offerings can be more robust. And unlike original Medicare, which doesn't cover annual physicals, they just cover that annual wellness visit I mentioned, um, there is an annual physical um, that comes with Medicare Advantage plans. But remember, they are only covering you within their service area. So not just the network of doctors, but the network of facilities. They will only cover you for emergencies. Okay, next slide. Okay, so now I just want to spend a few of our remaining minutes talking about Medicare prescription drug coverage, or Part D. 
Um, although Medicare interestingly considers Part D optional, um, they do assess the penalty if you're a late enrollee, if you decide you're not gonna take it when you're el first eligible for it and then try to pick it up later on. Um, you can during certain periods, but you will be assessed a penalty. And once again, that penalty will stay with you. Um, anyone who has either Part A or Part B can enroll in a Part D plan. Um, and beneficiaries, again, can obtain that prescription drug coverage either through a standalone Part D plan or through a Medicare Advantage plan. So we can go on to the next slide. Okay, so there are four uh, coverage phases uh, as part of the Mar Part D uh, standard benefit. Uh, some drug plans have a deductible, others do not. Um, but and that is the situation where the beneficiary is going to pay the full retail cost of the drug before they start to get the benefit of lower copays. So when their out-of-pocket spending has reached that deductible limit, um, and in 2020, um, plans have been allowed to have a deductible no higher than $435. Uh, but once a beneficiary has either reached that limit or if they are in a plan that has no deductible, they go into what we call the initial coverage period. Um, and that is where uh, the beneficiary, the consumer will pay approximately 25% of the retail cost and the plan will pay the balance. I think it's important to note though that retail cost is a very um, variable number and not all plans have the same retail cost for all medications on their formulary. And we'll get into how you can um, the, the tool that you can use to sort of research that and make sure that maybe you're staying with the best plan. Uh, if someone uh, pays out a total of $4,020, and this is a combination in total retail costs of what the plan has paid and what the consumer has paid, they then enter what's called the coverage gap or has been affectionately known as the donut hole. And uh, when this first started, the donut hole percentage of what a beneficiary had to pay was a lot larger. It has been shrinking or closing over the last few years, and it is now down uh, to 25%, um, which is what the beneficiary, the consumer would owe um, once they reach the donut hole. And then the catastrophic period, which um, sadly we do see a lot of people go into if they are on a lot of very expensive drugs, they may go into that catastrophic period very early in the year. Um, and that amount is $6,350 for this year. Um, then they, the percentage that the consumer has to pay uh, drops significantly to about maybe 5% of the retail cost. However, the retail cost for drugs, um, for some of those drugs that put them in that catastrophic category um, can be extremely high. Okay, we can go on to the next slide. So we always warn folks that come to shine that when you're choosing a prescription drug coverage plan, you have to be aware that plans may differ greatly in terms of the retail cost of the drug, whether or not the drug is on their formulary, the tier that they have the drug on, um, any restrictions on quantities or requirements for prior authorization or step therapies and things like that. Also, many plans have preferred pricing relationships with certain pharmacies, and the choice of where to have your prescriptions filled can make a significant difference in your total cost. So if we wanna to go to the next slide. So this is something relatively new that Medicare started uh, uh, promoting last year, and there really is a lot of benefits to folks that are new to Medicare. One of the first things we suggest they do is they go on to Medicare.gov and they establish what's called a MyMedicare.gov account. Um, it's a, it's a, there's a lot of tutorials on the web about how to do this. Shine has one out there themselves, but essentially you are setting up a password protected way for you to get into your own Medicare account. Um, and to then be able to use what's called the Medicare Plan Finder tool on a much more personalized basis because um, the Plan Finder tool, which does exactly as it says, it helps you to select the correct drug plan for you from year to year, um, can actually, through the My Medicare account, access your personalized Medicare information, find your prescription drug history, um, pull that list in, allow you to amend it or update it for any changes you've had during the year. Um, and really help you do a much more uh, thorough search as to what the dr best drug plan is for you. The other benefit of MyMedicare.gov um, is that you, um, you will also have access to all of your Medicare claims, um, benefit statements that come in. If you wanna go paperless, you can do that, but either way, you'll, you'll have online access to those as well. So we encourage that. At Shine, um, if you are uncomfortable doing that, Shine can help you set up that account and get you going on it. So, okay, I think we're good with that. All right, so we encourage beneficiaries to come and see us, not just when you're initially enrolling in Medicare and in the drug plan, but we ask people to make it, put it on their calendar to come back and see us every 
fall during Medicare open enrollment, which runs from October 15th to December 7th for coverage the following January. And the principal reason is that, you know, it's not a case where you just pick a Part D plan when you're first on Medicare and then you don't have to worry about it from year to year. I'm happy with it. It's, it's serving me well. I can tell you a lot of stories we had of people that leave it, don't change it, and then go in on January 1st and find that the current plan that they had is no longer covering a drug or the drug has changed to a different tier and all of a sudden their co-pays are a lot higher. And there is no going back and saying, well, I didn't know that, and now I'd like to change the plan, because again, these, these windows of opportunity are very firm in Medicare. So it makes sense for you to either come into Shine and have us check, or you can actually go on the plan finder and do this yourself. But again, we always stress it's important to compare plans every year. Okay, we have a couple more slides, and I think we'll be done. So... Um, Medicare costs change every single year, and I think you'll be getting a copy of this presentation, so these, these amounts might be helpful. But we have a lot of folks that are trying to cost out and budget and say, I'm ready to go on Medicare, how much is it gonna cost me? So these are the things you need to think about. So part A, again, is gonna be premium free for, for most folks um, who have earned those 40 credits. You've been paying into it all along. However, you wanna remember that um, you do have that hospital deductible of $1,408 anytime you go into the hospital. And it's important also to note that um, if this is not a necessarily an annual deductible, if you go into the hospital at the beginning of the year, you'll have to owe that deductible. If you're out for more than 60 days and you're hospitalized again, um, you have what's called the new benefit period that started and you may owe that, that deductible again. This is again with just original Medicare and no supplement to help you out. Part B premium uh, is currently $144.60 a month per person. This is for your medical insurance. You need to be aware that um, there are higher premium levels for folks that earn um, a certain amount, um, over a certain amount. Um, I believe right now it's a, for a single person, if you earn over $85,000 a year, you're going to be paying a higher premium. And for couples, it's $170,000, twice that amount. And those, um, those uh, income adjustment amounts also tend to change from year to year. But that'll just give you some idea in terms of budgeting. Um, and as, as you can see here, I mean, for extremely high uh, income individuals, that premium can actually go up as high as $491.60. And that annual deductible of $198, that's when you go into the doctor's office or you have blood work or lab work done at the beginning of the year, the first $198, if you're on original Medicare, is going to come out of your pocket. Um, and then from then on in, it, Medicare will be paying 80% and either you or your supplement will be picking up the 20%. And if you have a supplement, um, again, it doesn't matter because with the new rules, you're always going to owe that $198 unless you're grandfathered into Supplement 1. Medicare Advantage premiums, you can see the range is really broad. They go from zero premiums, but again, the lower the premium, the higher the co-pays you're going to pay if you start using the services. Um, and then we have higher premium Medicare Advantage plans for $266, and again, it's an inverse relationship, higher premium, lower co-pays. Part D drug plans, um, this year, the, the least expensive one is $13.30 a month. They go all the way up to $128 a month. Um, vast amount of differences for, um, you know, again, depending on what kind of drugs they're covering and what their retail costs are. Um, like Part B, if you are at a higher income level, you may have to pay more for this Part D plan as well. They do charge a premium to the folks that um, are making more than that $85,000 and couples more than $170,000 a year. And finally, Medigap plans, um, the premiums, the, the least expensive core plan is $104.10. The most expensive uh, Supplement 1A plan is $282. And the most expensive Supplement 1A uh, plan, I'm sorry, 1A plan is $282. And the most expensive Supplement 1 plan is $270. So again, these are numbers that just we provide to help you do a little bit of number crunching to, to realize that Coming off of an employer plan, sometimes some people pay less when they're on Medicare, but a lot of times people end up paying more when they're on Medicare for their health insurance. Okay, and I think the last slide we have, a couple more slides. We just wanted to very quickly let, let you know that in addition to Medicare counseling, when you come in to see us, we do do screening for public benefits programs. Um, these are programs that are designed to help pay for the cost of Medicare. We do screening for both federal and state programs. They're based on income and assets. Um, and I mean, some are for very low income individuals, but some you'd be surprised are for moderate income individuals and they can really help assist with paying premiums and mitigating some prescription drug costs. So we 
and they've expanded the eligibility for some of the state programs um, this year. So we really encourage people when they come in to see Shine to ask to be screened for those programs. Um, and we're more than happy to help determine if you're eligible and also help you with any applications that need to be done. Okay, I think we're okay here. And this is our last slide. Um, you're gonna get some brochures, I believe, that have these numbers on it, but for Medicare assistance, first place you're gonna go when you sign up for Medicare is you're gonna go visit Kevin um, and his folks, and that's where you sign up for Medicare. And again, you can do that either online or in person. Right now, as he mentioned, um, they don't have uh, offices open, but their phone lines are open for assistance, and they do have a terrific site where you can actually do a lot of things online. Um, and then once you've got that Medicare card in the mail and you wanna figure out what path you wanna take to Medicare and you wanna figure out what drug plan is best for you, that's when we want you to call us at Shine. Right now, as I said, we're not doing one-on-one -on -one appointments, but if you give us a call, we will hook you up with someone that can work with you over the phone. Um, and hopefully when we're all back to a little bit of uh, norm, a state of normal, um, we'll be able to once again be hosting uh, informational sessions for folks at senior centers and doing one-on-one -on -one appointments. So I thank you so much um, for your attention. And if there's any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them.